This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so we mentioned, Patty mentioned Traveling Mercies. Um, there's a new ministry potential coming up as well um, with a um, music therapist. And I just like prayer for that. Um, anyone else have any, any other prayer requests um, that you'd like to bring forward? Yes, I do, but I it's uh, an anonymous one, but it's kind of urgent, and I cannot share it. Okay, so, you know, God, God knows the whole situation. We don't need to know the whole situation. All we need to know is we need to lift that up in prayer. Okay, thank you. Um, it's for, I will, I will say it's for reconversion for a couple of people. Amen, amen. Any, any, anyone else, anything else? All right, who'd like to open us up in a word of prayer? Come on, guys. All right, I'll open us up in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, I just thank you for today and uh, thank you for those people that are able to make it out to the call today. And uh, those people that will be joining us uh, as the call goes on. Lord, I just uh, pray uh, specifically for Patty's uh, uh, family as they are making uh, traveling plans and whatnot, uh, that you would just give them traveling mercies as well as anybody else that might be traveling. And uh, Lord, I uh, pray for Twyla's uh, unspoken uh, request for conversions of the heart, mind, and soul. Um, Lord, and then I also uh, you know, um, as it relates to the uh, music therapist uh, concept that you uh, seem to be opening the door of, I just pray that you would um, make it clear what pathway we are to go on that. Um, thank you, Lord. Guide us and direct us as we... Uh, now move into a study of Ephesians uh, 3, verse 11. All right, thank you, Lord. Thank you for being with us. Guide us and direct us in your holy and precious name. Amen. All hey, uh, right. Guy, could I, Guy, could I, could I um, have a little prayer here? Yes. Yeah, I, I just got a message from Carl. He's not going to make it today. Our Father, you know the sickness that, Carl is dealing with, you know, that it's affecting his work, that it's affecting his money, that it's affecting his mind because he's concerned about it. You know that he doesn't feel like he wants to join today because he just feels sick. I just okay. ask that you be with the healing of his uh, cancer, that you'll take his pain away, that you will help him to be able to have uh, remedies. Uh, that he can use, and he uh, says he would like us to pray for him today. So I'm just uh, putting a prayer in for Carl today that you would encourage him, yes. and that if he would just listen, it would probably help him. So I'm going to text him and ask him just to listen today. He doesn't have to participate, and it would probably give him strength because I'm sure he did not go to church today in the way he's feeling. Just thank you, Lord, for our study today. We ask for your Holy Spirit. To be with us again as guy has uh previously uh wanted in jesus name i pray amen 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 all right so um i think in our note i mentioned ephesians uh chapter 10 or 3 verse 10 but i think we've already covered that we are into 11. um if i'm incorrect on that uh please somebody tell me but i think we are into verse 11. All right, so let's move forward. Um, Ephesians 3.11. Uh, who would like to read that for me? And yeah, by the way, if, uh, if there's any uh, time where a person just wants to listen in, I am more than okay with that. If you just let me know that ahead of time, it, it helps to uh, make sure that I can... Uh, Make sure that happens for you. Anyway, 
Uh, can, uh, Guy, yes. Guy, can, if Carl is not able to mute himself, can can you mute him on there because he does use a phone and not computer? I will uh, here. Let's see. Um, da, 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 da. Let me try to mute you. Mute Twyla. Unmute. Yes, I can. Okay. Yeah. I'll yeah. let him. I'll let him know that. Yeah, and if he comes in, I'll just if he is if he identifies who he is, I will uh, put him on mute, and uh, we'll just be good from there. Okay, I let him know. Thank you. Let's let's continue now. All right, Anthony, welcome to the call. Hello, hello. It's just uh, it's just driving. We're just driving through uh, London. I mean, he's going to get packed up and we'll go get back to the hotel. Gotcha. Marcel there with you? Hey, right, mate. I'm the one talking. He's just driving at the minute. Yeah, gotcha. Okay, All gotcha. right. So who would like to open us up by uh, reading Ephesians 3.11 uh, in any verse other than KJV to start with? I can in the new King James. Go ahead, Jennifer. Three eleven. Yes, please. Okay. According to the eternal purpose which He accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah, and if you remember, for those that were on the call last week, we had the the purposed purpose. Now we're continuing on with that purpose. Um. So. Anybody else have another translation? Kyle, what you what does yours say? The message translation reads, All this is proceeding along the lines planned all along by God and then executed in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So uh, in KJV, uh, can somebody read Ephesians 3? 10 through 13. Ephesians 3, 10 through 13. I can do that. Go ahead, Twyla. To the intent that now under the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church and the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness, and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore, I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is our glory. Amen. You want me to go into the, to the prayer, or just, I think, nope. just right there, huh? No, nope. we're going to stop right there. All right, how many words repeat, or how many words occur more than once in this verse? How many words occur more than once? We're looking at KJV. Hmm, the purpose and purpose. Yeah, that that I would definitely see. We co we didn't cover verse eleven last week, did we? Uh, I feel like I, we did. I, I do too. Um, let me scroll down here. Ah, okay. I see where we were. We were down to uh, going through the who, what, where, when, why. I, this is the purpose, purpose. All right. So uh, we are actually presently at the where in this verse. <clears throat> so within this verse, what would the where of this verse be? In Christ. In Christ, definitely. In Christ. Um, is there anything else that anybody else sees besides in Christ? Actually, for me, I just put in. Uh, but what's he, what are you in? You're in Christ. So the other thing that I saw here kind of, of aware is eternal. Where is this? This is within the scope of eternal. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts here for where? So, I don't know if it's aware, but 
we're we're part of that eternal purpose. We're integrated 100%. in there. Yeah. So we're that could be kind of like aware, but it's more referencing like a more of a figurative where than a physical where. I would definitely get you there. Definitely get you there. All right, let's go ahead and drop down to Hawaii unless anybody else has something for the where aspect of this. Why, what's the why of this verse? Eternal purpose. <clears throat> Absolutely. According to the eternal purpose. And what is, and I, Kyle just alluded to it, what is the eternal purpose? What is uh, Christ Jesus, our Lord? Well, that's... What, no, no, he's... He so purposed. What, what is the eternal purpose of Christ Jesus, our Lord? According? Oops. I, and, and I see where you're going with that, Jennifer. Well, I, I'm kind of drawing a little bit further with that. The eternal purpose is you and I. Oh. The eternal purpose is our our redemption. That's that's a whole mission of what Christ mm -hmm. came for, is mm -hmm. is to restore us or or bring us into a place where we can be face to face with the Father and know that we won't be obliterated because we are, you know, we we have this bridge, this gap that is unable to connect. Our His eternal purpose is for us to be out of this situation that we're currently in. Mm -hmm. So, because the Lamb was slain before the foundations of the earth were laid, so God knew Christ would have to die for the sins of mankind to set us free from the law of sin and death. So he hid if, that purpose. If, if, if mankind chose to do what we chose to do. We had the propensity to sin, but instead, until sin actually entered in, mm -hmm. we, we, it, it wasn't a reality. If if we would have obeyed our father and his son, if we would have simply obeyed and followed, mm -hmm. it never would have been an issue. There would never have been a need for Christ to die for the uh, for mankind because we would still be directly accessing without sin. But when we did, it was set from the uh, beginning of the earth that there would be a way, a, a way made. And praise God there is, because without it, we're toast. So God knew beforehand and hid the mystery of the reconciliation of God the man in Christ for mm -hmm. us to discover once we believe. Amen. 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 Any other thoughts here on the why of verse 11? All right, let's go down to a win. So what's the win of this verse? Well, when? <clears throat> yeah, when? Go ahead. Well, Eternal? Oh, sorry. Right. Go, ahead, go ahead, Twyla. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Twyla. Well, it's past tense, but it's also present tense. And the interesting thing is he does the present tense before he does the past tense. You would think he would put purpose before purpose, but he does. Uh, the purpose, which is now, because of the purpose, which was before. That's really an interesting way I, I, to set I, up that. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I like that. Amen. Yeah. So, so the purpose of Christ was to reveal the overall purpose, which was eternal life through Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. Mm. Which was purposed before the foundations of the earth. So, well, and and so everything that has happened has pushed us to the point of needing to find him 
because there's no answers because he is the truth. Amen. And that, that's what makes us want to find him is because like he is the only truth. There's no, nobody else is selling truth out here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, I'd like to um, reference back to the first, uh, some of the first verses that uh, we discovered in Ephesians, because it says in verse four of the first chapter that we were yeah, you know, chosen. Twilight, before... let, let me jump in here for just a minute. Um, I actually, in my notes down below, I actually, that's the one verse that I pulled forward was verse four. So go for it. Unfold that for us. Well, he said that we were already chosen before the foundation, and we're already chosen to be holy, already chosen without blame, already have been predestined in verse 5. And the reason is because of his love, if you go back to verse 4, because we were to be in verse 5 to the good pleasure of his love, of his will. And so I don't think you can look at this little simple verse here, if you want to call it such, verse 11 without going back to what paul says to the ephesians um here in verse 4 and 5 because we've already been redeemed we've already been forgiven we've already gotten as much grace as he's ever going to give us because there's nothing more he's given us everything he has amen and i just like i like the idea of in the past he has already provided for us to make our present so we can build our present on his past acceptance as often we're and we're still totally unacceptable unless by the righteousness of Jesus we have that in us. We're totally, you know, we need to have those things right now. We need to be accepted, beloved, forgiven, have his grace, all those things. Amen. Amen. Wow. So he and I, I read that before in the Bible that says that he, when we realize we have a need, he is already there with the provisions waiting for us to enter into what he has for us, that he's prepared before. Yes. Like, So the lamb was already slain. Like, So it was finished before it started. The Alpha mm. and the Omega re represents the finish. So he didn't start anything that wasn't finished. He's not trying to get us to help him finish it. He's just getting us to take our parts in it. Yes. Just like how to, holy smokes. And you know what? That makes it a lot easier to accept because mm -hmm. like, wow, like this is the finished work. Like I just accept it. That's it. Wow. Well, it's, finished, it it's, finished, it's finished in the sense that he can't give us any more, but it's not finished in the sense that he's done um, – done with the work in our lives though he's not finished with that mm -hmm. work according to philippians 1 6 that's not going to be completed until he comes but yes there's his there's nothing more he can do uh for us that he's not already done he's just waiting for us to accept us his worth work of giving is done our work of accepting and and accepting him into our life first of all and then accepting the transformation he wants to do is an on do it's an ongoing process. So I'm more directing my focus towards appropriating the victory that I have in Christ, rather than trying to create it on my own to give to Him as some shabby offering. When rather He'd have me be obedient and receive the Son. Just, Amen. Just That's it. true. Wow. <laughs> That's true because it, the victory is already won. In Second Chronicles, that victory was already won. That 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 battle has already been fought. We have that if we accept that. We have that. You're right. We we just have to appropriate it. We have to know how to why, uh, use wisdom to apply it and live accordingly, so that we can benefit from reaping or yeah reap from sowing the truth or love Amen. or wow. Amen. Um, Any other thoughts here? Um, Jennifer, I know you had something to start with, and uh, we kept on kind of walking over each other. Did you have something now? Um, I kind of forgot. Oh, okay. uh, when it comes to me, I'll say, but I, I was just 
I was just listening to what what guy I mean what uh Twyla and the gentleman was saying and it's it's wow I never really kind of put I mean I never really thought I mean I you know I've been like I've, today I was asking for wisdom you know and it's just it's just wow it's just so awesome mm -mm -mm. Well, 100%. there's a, a word that Kyle used that is, it is just so explanatory as to the process that we engage in, and that's appropriate for mm -hmm. us to appropriate what God has provided. Amen. Because Christ made everything. He says, nothing in creation has its being but by me. So, like, he literally gave us everything in Christ. So, like what more is there because everything that is in creation comes from the one who lives in you through the holy spirit so you have what you're looking for you just you don't realize it and you can't appropriate something yeah. you don't realize you have mm -hmm. exactly. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <clears throat> so what would be a synonym of appropriate um wow so if you were going to share this with a with a kid, with a young person, you would not want to use that word. You would want to use a, a simpler word. Suitable, what, what would... suitable, proper, fitting, relevant, connected, uh, applicable. How about use? How about use? use. How about the word use? As in U U S E D. Yeah. Use USE. You just so use. if you want, yeah. If you wanted to make it really simple for someone that, um, say, on the street or someone who really wasn't a spiritual person, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, talked with someone yesterday who said, uh, "Well, I've been to a Baptist church and I used to go to a Catholic church, but I." haven't even had a Bible for 30 years until I took someone a couple weeks ago. And it's like, I cannot use the word appropriate. I would say uh, a, a simple word might be used to use, to uh, put into effect what God has given you as a victory. And they just went through a really hard time in their life and didn't even want to talk about it. And I said, well, you know, later text me about it. And they felt really comfortable and they talked to me about it right then. But, you know, when you're sharing with someone like that, that really doesn't have any religious background to speak of it's like um i need words that that they can grasp right off the bat and that's why i was asking for other synonyms besides the word used because that's kind of a real simple word and maybe it doesn't fit entirely mm -hmm. sure. well the word connect would i suppose uh connect could be used there making a connection Mm-hmm. Or apply. Well, connected yeah. connected uh, yeah. is, an, it is a synonym for appropriate. So I could see connect without a problem. And there's, mm -hmm. there's fitting. So it like, maybe I didn't, I don't have the proper fit for the understanding. Like my understanding is too loose or too tight. So if I fit it just right, I'd be able to get it, my mind around it. And another word that I didn't uh, say was significant. And I know that's another bigger word, but a lot of people can relate with the word significant, largely significant. because they feel significant in this world. Oh, like regard, like regard it as, mm -hmm. as an authority or something, regard it as substantive, like as something. So, so Kyle, is this you speaking? Yes. Yes, this is. Okay, would you do me a favor? Would you put that, uh, the sentence you use for the word appropriate, would you put that in a sentence not using that particular word, but using uh, another word that would be more helpful for someone that I, that I could share? Would you mind doing that for me? I, I'd appreciate that. I really enjoy your um, addition to the, to the Bible studies, and I'd like to hear your sentence. Okay, so... Uh, I would say that in the moment of your trial, the, the what you need is allotted to you. You just have to find a way to use what you've been given the right way. Because, like, 
I can get a mm-hmm. bottle, like a, a, a pill bottle of Tylenol, and I can take the pill out the bottle and actually put it on my physical forehead. But it doesn't work unless I take it and I, <laughs> I, I consume it so that it can do its job. There's a need for me to do what it's intended, to use it for its intended purpose, which is to meet a need, which would at the time be a headache, but in a struggle, it would be maybe I need patience or maybe I need to learn to forgive. And maybe things are going crazy. I need some hope. So you have to believe the truth, not just read it, the word mm-hmm. of God, but let the, not just get in the word of God, but let the word of God get in you. Mm-hmm. And the same way you eat bread and the carbs go to your belly, like there is nutrients in the truth that feeds you, especially when it comes out of your mouth. Even when you don't understand what you're saying, the truth coming out of your mouth, there's an anointing and it begins to change your life because that's what you need is the truth. The truth is like the little pill for your little headache, but it doesn't work if you just put it on your head. You have to eat it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it'd be just using what's available. So like if, oh, I see it. Um, if I have some kind of debt forgiveness, something someone has forgiven me or an accident or something, and then I broke something and the store says, it's okay. We're taking care of it. We got insurance. We're just going to appropriate this thing that we have in place or a warranty on your car. And you got a little warranty and something goes defective. You don't have to pay for it. It's covered. So I'm going to appropriate that warranty. And then I'm going to use its benefits because I need it. And wow, I need it. And it's here. Let's use it. (laughs) Look Mm -hmm. at that. Okay, thank you. Let's move to hell. So what do we have for hell? Come on, guys. Uh, In Christ? Jesus, our Lord. So what I did was uh, it was very similar to that. Is he purposed in? Is what I how I answered this. That's what he was doing. He was purposing in. But was it what was he purposing in? Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm. Um, so if the, so if the question were, how did he do that? What would your answer be? By the fact that he purposed. He did it intentionally uh, on purpose. <laughs> he, so, he, it, was, it was his mission. So Jesus accomplishing his mission on earth was according to the, the mission, the overall mission that is in eternity that overarches all of time. And I he... Go ahead. And he cre- he created something for us to bear witness to because we were blind and deaf. So like he had to he had to give it because we have no reference. We have no like if I tried to witness to a mouse and I could speak mouse, I would talk about human things and they would be confused because they don't know human life. They only know mouse life. So I can't witness properly to a mouse even if I could speak mouse our understandings are the problem. And that's why he needed to give us an example to follow. Cause we're, unable, I don't know. That's what I'm getting. Like we weren't able to get it without him setting a physical thing for us to see until the revelation could hit. And then it'll, all the light bulbs will just go on. Like we just got to screw all the light bulbs in first. Let's get them all in, plug in all the cords. And then he flips the switch and they all turn on. The, the only thing that I might um, encourage a further reflection on is the he there uh, that you, you, you suggested, it seemed like you may have suggested was Christ. I believe that he, the representation there is the father. The father purposed absolutely everything you just said in Christ his son and yeah. 
that that's other than that you know i i spot on with everything you said and the the strange thing i don't mean to get too far off topic was christ was there to embody the father everything he's seen and heard the father do and say he did and so he said if you've seen me you've seen the father so was the son's purpose to reveal the father to us amen that we might be reconciled to the father who actually loves us and send his son to prove that he did because like i I think i think i think you're uh quoting scripture pretty well there maybe not because like like, even today people sacrifice to gods to prove their love for god but then god said wait hold on let me show you i love you and i don't need your blood i don't need you to cut (laughs) yourself and hurt each other like i need you to love because that's what i need you for amen this is great but yep. but what it what it says in Second uh, Corinthians five seventeen is that it is God in Christ reconciling. Amen. It's, it's not Christ in God the way they put it that it's God in Christ. So it's like it's hard to separate those two out because according to John seventeen they are one, um, but they're not going to capitalize the word he there in the verse we just read. And I do believe that is God there as well. But, you know, sometimes you can, you are able to interchange a God, Christ, you know. uh, Sometimes you can interchange those. Well, it's it's also because of their joint uh, oneness, as you were bringing out. They are so in line together with character, thought, and, and mind that, you can't you you can't separate it because they're 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 you know a husband and wife ultimately are supposed to be one together so that they move successfully together. Unfortunately, we humans sometimes stumble in that area. God the Father and the Son never did. But you know the other cool thing too, if you go to Philippians two and putting that all together with John seventeen again is that we are supposed to be a part of that union too. 100%. 100%. Absolutely. Absolutely. I have, a, I have a strange question because what was the Father doing while Jesus was on the cross? Like, Because well, most times I'd assume he was up there holding lightning bolts so angry with what mankind did. What if we were crucifying the Father in the Son, not mm. knowing we're, we're crucifying actual God who is ready to love us, but the hardness of our hearts prevented us from receiving him. And he just sent a message that reverberates through the halls of eternity. And Kyle is like hearing it. <laughs> Very well said, Kyle. Very well said. Very well said. Um, there's, there's one that's angry, and it's not God. The one that's angry happens to be the one that's trying to destroy and devour all humanity. That would his the, name is Satan. The accuser of the brethren. Exactly. All right, let's step into uh, the commentary of encouragement. Commentary of encouragement. Before we do that, somebody want to reread. Ephesians 3.11, uh, in whatever translation you choose. Ephesians. How about, the, uh, how about, some, how about somebody reading from the Amplified? Is Rosie, is Rosie uh, on the you're call? The, you're the only Amplified on the line, I think, today. Go ahead. Oh, I'd be happy to read Ephesians 3.11 from the Amplified. This is in accordance with the terms of the eternal and timeless purchase purpose, which he has realized and carried into effect in the person of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Many people ask about what the will of God for our lives is. It would be so much easier if they would simply read what the Word of God says. 2 Peter 3.9. How do you have that for me? 2 Peter 3.9. Well, I have Philippians 2, uh, 2.13 while she's looking for that. For it is God which worketh in you both to will 
and to do of his good pleasure. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Second Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Sadly, the full extent of the will of God will never be realized. Not because God is not able, Hebrews 7.25. Boniface, you got that for me? Hebrews 7.25. Pardon, please. Hebrew. Yeah, Hebrews seven twenty-five. All right. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the out uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing the ever living to make intercession for them. God is quite able. God is quite willing. But God is also wanting humanity to exercise the free will they have been granted. Amen. Within the parameters of that free will, if we choose to accept the plan of salvation laid out for us, then he will welcome us with open arms. John 6.37. Jennifer? Sure. 6.37. I'm going to read it to the New King James. That's fine. Okay. All that the Father gives me will come, will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. Amen. However, we do not need to wait for the eternal purpose of God to unfold into our lives. It can and does begin now, today, this very minute. Irene, do you want to read 2 Corinthians 6 2? 2 Corinthians 6 2. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation have I secured. secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Yes, we are adopted into the family of God today. Ephesians 1.5. Let's see. Ephesians 1.5. I, I would read that. Go ahead. I would love to read that verse. All right. Whoops. I was over in Philippians. Let me go to Ephesians 1 5. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ unto himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Amen. Though the actual co inheritance with the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is yet to come. Kyle, Romans 8 17. One second. And it'll be out of the message translation. Romans eight seventeen. And we know what we're going and we know we are going to get what's coming to us, an unbelievable inheritance. We go through exactly what Christ goes through. If we go through the hard times with him, then we're certainly going to go through the good times with him. Amen. From where we can know, know with great joy, Galatians 4, 6 through 7. Patty? Okay, Galatians so 4, 6 through 7. 6 to 7, okay. Uh, and because you are sons, 
God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art uh, no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then you're heirs, uh, heir of God through Christ. This was the plan from the very beginning when we were put out of the garden. Not because, I, of, not, what's that? No, no, when you're done, I, I something's coming up in my spirit. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead and share that, Kyle. Um, applying, <laughs> applying authority, uh, as for the example we were talking about, instead of appropriation, <laughs> applying authority. Because if you have authority over something and you apply it, then you know, you're exercise or exercising your authority. That was another example that came up in my spirit just now as we were reading. Amen. Amen. And if you ever, you know, as I'm reading through this, if you ever have any thoughts, do interrupt me. I have no problem with being interrupted. And I definitely do want everybody contributing as much as they are able. So this was the plan from the very beginning when we were put out of the garden not because of punishment per se, but rather the consequences of what took place when we allowed sin to enter into our hearts. Boniface, you want to read uh, Genesis 3, 23 through 23? Genesis 3, 22 through 23. Genesis 3, 22 through 23. Yes, Gary. And and the Lord said, Behold, the man is is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and leave live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of till the ground from whence he was taken. And continues throughout history until the day end of eternity and beyond. 1 Thessalonians 4.17. Um, let's see, Twilight, you got that one? Uh, I it? can have. 1 Thessalonians what? 1 Thessalonians 4.17. Okay, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Okay. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. What amazing love <clears throat> from Jesus, the Son of God, to choose to play such a pivotal part of our rescue mission. What amazing love from the Father who put all things into motion through his precious only begotten Son. What amazing love. What amazing love. Um, can somebody read... First John three one. First John three one. Uh, Jennifer, you have that? Yes. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Therefore the world does not know us, because it did not know him. Okay, so I'm gonna have somebody else mm -hmm. read that directly from a KJV because there's one word that you changed oh. that oh. I, I think I really want to hear it from a KJV. Does somebody have the KJV? First John 3 1. Patty? Yes. Uh, behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knows us not because it knew him not. What word changed? 
manner what manner of blood oh no. no. oh that was one. so what word changed so what i'm gonna i i want us to really think about this jennifer go ahead and read your verse again and see if you can catch the word that changed behold what manner of love the father has bestowed on us that we should be called children of god therefore the world does not know us because it did not know him sons of god right sons of god yeah, yeah. absolutely now I, I, I therefore we are children but to me it's a whole lot more significant to know that we will be small s sons of god mm. that's just that's just huge um, well now well now guy i think that uh you should put the word daughter in there with a small d too <laughs> so, uh, fair enough twyla fair enough <laughs> well, twyla, i definitely get, but son, yeah, son does son does not do a thing for me i'll tell you what it does nothing for me well i think when it when it says the word son there it's talking about uh, Christ formed within us. Oh, I would definitely yeah. agree. And Twyla, just to set the record straight, Christ can be formed within daughters just as well as sons. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and um, when a man and a woman join together in holy matrimony, they become one flesh. Um, mm. there's, there's no male or female in heaven um and it's it's not one given to another in marriage in heaven like it is down here um well, well um i'm 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 gonna uh, yeah um i i i tend to be one that would challenge that um, you know but, well, um well the but, south but, no, the same, no here let, let me keep the mic for a minute um at the same time I am also going to say this. We now know as in a shadow compared to what we will know. Mm. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we might think we have a clue. Brothers and sisters, let me just tell you, we ain't got a clue. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, one of the, one of the reasons, I'm just going to share a personal situation here. One of the reasons I personally challenge that, and sometimes I go into tears when explaining this, but I don't, it doesn't seem to be right now. I have no children. I've always wanted to have children. And I believe, and this may be shadowing my situation a little bit, I believe that in heaven, there is going to be the ability to have children and there's many verses that say that there is and eventually one day i'll hear those precious words daddy i don't get that here and that's okay because god's god doesn't give me more than i can handle mm. but but even if i'm wrong i'm okay with that but if there's ever a chance, ever time, where I'm going to hear those words, it's going to be in heaven, not here. Because, well, I'm heading towards my 60s now. I'm probably not going to have children here on this side of the earth. So anyway, that just, a little bit of motion in there. I'm sure you could see that. But it, that just, that's, we all have, we all have struggles that we're given in this life. Amen. Um, yeah. And, you know, are we going to have marriage? Are we not going to have marriage? What's going to happen? All I know, brothers and sisters, it's worth it. Get there. Be there. <laughs> uh, do I know all the answers? Not a chance. But I do know yeah. the father and his son, and they are amazing. And, and, and look at what, he, what they've done in a world of 6,000 years of sin. And what they still do for us every single day. And Remove sin and now they have the chance to do all their work without sin? Uh, there's only one word I have and that's incredible. <laughs> so, anyway. 
All right, I, I welcome other thoughts on this. I don't want to get uh, have us get off on a tangent, but go, and then perhaps I did that. Um, but anyway, any other yeah. thoughts? So um, maybe and maybe there's some room for me to learn, but I believe in heaven there are only sons because we come into the body of Christ as one. And now there's no Jew or Gentile, no male, no female, no labels, because we're united in the oneness with Christ as the head and we as the body. But me as a man, I'm also part of the bride of Christ, which would connotate a female, but I'm a man, but I'm going to be the bride that Jesus comes for to wash me up and, and things like that. So like um, children of God, if you're a son, you also carry the name and the same seed as your father. You have the ability to seed because you, you, you're the male with the seed. So if we, go back, if we go back to Genesis and we see when man was created, um, man actually involved both male and female. Adam was created differently than Eve, but I tell you what, brothers and sisters, had there not been a man and a woman, you and I wouldn't be having a conversation right now. There well, needed to be both. Go ahead, Patty. We need to distinguish between the thousand years that we will spend in heaven. Amen. Uh, before. Uh, the, but, but remember, then, that's but then before. This also, go ahead. Yeah. You know, that thousand years in heaven uh, is, you know, it's before a sin is actually destroyed. The final destruction of sin takes place after the millennium uh, mm. when the holy city is brought down here. His bride is brought down here, his people. And you, uh, he'll I, just. I need to jump in here for a minute. Can you support the holy city coming down to, uh, can you support what you just said with Bible? Yes, it's in Revelation. Revelation. Okay, but but what I'm saying it's is... It's Revelation 21. Oh, is it 21? 21, 1 through 4. Yeah. Okay. And so after we come here in the holy with the holy city, then the final destruction of sin and sinners, and then he makes the earth new. And mm -hmm. that is what we are a part of. And it says we'll build houses and, you know, plant gardens and so on. Yeah. So in other words, yeah. it will be the new earth will replace the earth that was destroyed by sin. Uh, but our time in heaven uh, has a special purpose that is called the millennium, the thousand years from the time we leave here. And uh, it's a, you know, it's it's a judging God, making sure that, what he did was fair. So you know, I think we're getting in, we're getting into several different studies here, Guy. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And I'm, I'm just about to wrap up for the day. Yes, we are. I do want to give a couple of uh, different scriptures based on what uh, Patty has said uh, as it relates to the, uh, uh, to both what happens to the righteous and the wicked, Revelation 20, 4 through 6. And then what? Ha and then as it relates to uh, where the uh, uh, what happens after uh, that whole event, Malachi four one through three. Um, I'll let you guys go ahead and study those areas um, on your own because Twyla is quite. We're getting into uh, several different studies. But did you uh, say Ma Malachi? Yeah, Malachi four one. Uh -huh. through and then okay. um, the other one that I would encourage people to read uh, is uh, Revelation 20, 4 through 6. And Kyle, okay. if you want to have time to just uh, get together and, and study on these things a little bit more, I'm more than willing to do a one-on-one -on -one with you as well. Um, now, one of, yeah. the, one of the reasons I said that is because the mm -hmm. verse I was going to bring up which kind of went along with everybody else's stuff was a whole different study. And I didn't want to bring that up because 
you know, those are separate things that this study is not intended to do in Ephesians. So I, 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 think I do agree. I, I do agree with you. I kind of let it uh, go a little bit um, to be because I knew I had a couple extra minutes, and so I kind of let 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 the reins go a little bit in that direction for today. Yes, you are correct, Glenn. Um, any other thoughts as it relates to all this? Um, I just have a, a, a sitting thought that um, my parents and then whatever children that God might bless me with in my future as well, um, if they believe unto salvation by grace through faith, they become my brother and sister in heaven. Like they're like, it's hard for adults to look at their children as their brother and sister in Christ and treat them as such. But that's the truth is that we're all here to become sons of God or children of God. And even though we are their parents, we're gifted with the love that God would allow for us to become stewards of one of his children. They in heaven will be our brother or sister. And it's kind of strange, just like I'm a bride of Christ. Well, if I could uh, build on that, I'd say we are brothers and sisters now. Amen. But yeah, it's hard to see that and understand that mindset when we have the dynamics that we're dealing with in humanity today. You are correct. Um, all right. And by the way, I did just make that one-on-one -on -one study available for Kyle. That's available for anyone. Um, if if you have a question that you would like to um, you know, do a one-on-one -on -one with, uh, the one thing I might do is I might have us come, come out to go to meeting and do a recording on it so we can share it with others. But I am more than open to studying on any topic in, in, in anything as long as we uh, maintain the uh, open mic communication that we that I that I um, encourage to be fostered within this study. Um, I, I I'll study any topic. Um, and on that note, so you know how to get a hold of me. I, well, you can text me or Facebook me or whatever. However, I get a hold of you, you can get a hold of me. Um, anyway, um, who would like to close us in a word of prayer? I can do that. Go ahead. Our Father, we just thank you so much for the time on this beautiful Saturday afternoon. That one, we are alive because of you. We thank you for the promises that you've given us, that you have all these good things for us, and that you're wanting to give them to us now. And you want us to ask you to live in us. We just thank you so much for your for your grace, for your goodness, for your mercy, for your promises that you do have a place for us up in heaven. Thank you for being able to ask you to answer our requests, like Patty's family and their traveling, like Coral's health, like the people, the two people who are especially on my heart the last few days for the reconversion. We just ask that you would help us to be converted every day. We need you to live in us. Thank you for the thoughts that were shared today for the learning, for the depth that you give us as we share uh, one with another. Thank you for the uh, guidance of Guy and uh, how he tries to be fair and how he um, wants other people's thoughts and for the humbleness there. We just thank you for your spirit to be a part of our group. Ask that you will uh, bless each one of us with something that we can take away from each time we're able to study together that will help us to know you better that will help us to appropriate your blood in our lives, that we will accept everything you want to give us to change us, to be more like you and to live in us. Just thank you for listening today. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that was in our study. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Blessings to you all. Let me go ahead and turn off the recording here.